This is Jeff Townsend. Thank you for joining me on my journey, sharing great thing, stupendous content creators are doing. This is Indie Podcaster. Have you been searching for a podcast? Do you want to learn from some great content creators? Well, you've come to the right place. Indie Podcaster with your host, Jeff Townsend, the Indie Podcast father. All right. Like I said, it is Indie Podcaster time. I am Jeff Townsend and you are you. And that was just confusing. But no, seriously, I am appreciative that you are coming back for another week of Indie Podcaster. Got an awesome episode lined up today. Shereya Sherma, she's a writer for Inside Podcasting, and she's also involved with the awesome team at Sounds Profitable. Tom Webster and Brian Barletta have a great thing going. So they started a podcast called The Download, a good short form podcast on the news of the week. I'm really enjoying it. And I really enjoyed having this conversation with her. We talked about her journey into podcasting and then also the industry and indie podcasters and how it all kind of connects. And then she talks about a lot of the help that she does for the indie podcast community, not only with her writing, but whether it be on Reddit, Twitter, or just really taking the time to try to be a helping hand for the community. It's an awesome conversation, and I'm, I'm so happy to share it with you. I do want to mention on Monday nights, we've been doing a podcasting power hour on Twitter. Friends of mine from the industry, uh, fellow indie podcasters, people that are way better than me, we're all joining forces and tackling questions or feedback provided. Whatever indie podcasters need, we're there for you. So check out my Twitter profile at podcast underscore father and look out for the Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern podcasting power hour Twitter spaces. Before we get into that, I do need to thank a couple different supporters of the podcast that keep it going. I really do. Let's just take a quick second here to acknowledge a supporter of this podcast, Podden.io. Podden.io is a great service for podcast transcription, and I'm telling you, I can personally vouch for them. They're the most simple and accurate one I've ever used. I absolutely love it, and I do think it's important that all you podcasters listening give it a try and actually have a transcription for your podcast. If you use the code AnyPodcaster, you get 50% off your first month. It's worth checking out. I guarantee it. Go to podden.io. Let's go ahead and check out this stupendous conversation. All right. I'm excited to talk to you today, Shreya. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. How are you doing? I'm good, Jeff. Good, excited, and busy. How are you? Hey, that sums it up too. Like, what more can you have in life, right? Besides good, excited, and busy. That's like, that's the American dream, dang it, right? Absolutely. So before we get started, I did want to say thank you because the really cool thing, how we kind of like met, we hadn't talked before, but you reached out to me online and you were like, hey, I'm doing this 2021, like takeaways from 2021 from podcasters. And I would like like your opinion on it. And that was super cool. And I appreciate that. So that's really cool for you to like approach me and do that without like us not really having a you know, like a relationship before, because like the podcast industry has a lot of people have like really strong relationships in it. So for you to like think highly of me enough to just like reach out to me, like on first contact and say that that was like, or an offer that that was super cool. So I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. You speak to the indie podcasting community and I hope to write for them and continue writing for them. So I wanted to make sure that your voice was included in podcasting takeaways that I did for last year. It's like I've been doing this project for like the last year now and I call it a project, but you know what I mean? Like, like I've been hardcore into like what I'm doing for this indie podcast community last year. And it's always like crazy to find out like how people even hear about me or like, you know, what I'm doing. So it's kind of cool when you hear about something like that. But I do want to give you a few seconds to tell us about yourself. And I guess I didn't explain why you were asking that a little bit. I'll let you get into some of the details of all the cool things that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been writing inside podcasting for nearly two years now. It gets published every Tuesday and Thursday. And I cover industry news in a little bit more detail than pod news does. I also have event updates and I have my favorite section, which is pods on the block, where I try to highlight more independent podcasters. It's not always possible because it's hard to find indie shows. And that's exactly why I put them on the pods on the block. But I aim to have at least one to two 
out of the five shows on there t- as independent. Why is that exactly? Is it like doing your part kind of? I know you said it's hard to find them, but like, do you feel like that's kind of like what you can do to give back? I think it's because I started listening or rather I started getting into podcasting because of independent shows. And Mm. one of the first podcasts that I heard, and I still continue to love it, is called Let's Talk About Myths, Baby. And it's a Greek mythology show, which is hosted, written, edited, produced, everything by Liv, who lives out in, I think she lives in Montreal. I know she's based in Canada. And I have been following her journey since 2017. She started creating this show as a quote unquote hobby, but then it became so popular and she fell in love with the audience, the message that she was giving out. And now it is her full-time job. I've seen her hustle and I've seen her work super hard. And her show was one of the few podcasts that really, I can say, got me through the initial lockdown. I don't want to say before the pandemic, because the pandemic is still kind of, I don't know. But when we were first hit by the pandemic, these podcasts were super helpful to me. And I just want to, like you said, do my part. So we got a lot of other things that you're doing too that we'll get into. But going back a little bit, so how did you get into podcasting? So I assume that I'm just making an assumption, right? So you went to school for something, I don't know, journalism. I'm just making stuff up as I go along here. How did you like get into this, the writing for inside, but even beforehand, how did you get into writing? And then when it will segue into that job. Yeah, absolutely. So I went to school for engineering, actually, to be an electronics oh, wow. and I communication engineer. <laughs> I mean, I wish that I would have gone for journalism. I don't know. I love science. So I really did enjoy my majors. And then I did an MBA for marketing. And that's kind of when I started doing more technical writing because I understood that there was a need. There's always a need to take more complicated subject matters and distill them, for lack of a better word, lay people. And since then, that's been my passion when it comes to writing, whether it's just creating memos in the company that I've been working for or copywriting. That's what I've always wanted to do. My first job was at an advertising agency and my first client was McDonald's, which was fun. And I remember doing copywriting for them. And I remember seeing this copy that I had written just on every boarding in Dubai. And when when I saw my writing up there, I was like, wow, this is a great feeling. I want to feel this way all the time. I want my writing to be out there. So... That's kind of how I started my writing journey, which is my, I would say, nonfiction writing because I'm still trying finally. We know we all have that one journal, that one novel that we wanted to have written five years ago, and it's still not out there. And I'm, I'm one of those people. So I'm still working on my fiction writing. But that's how the nonfiction writing started for me. And when I moved to Vancouver, I joined the Vancouver Podcast Brunch Club, which is As you know, the podcast Brunch Club is run by Adela, and there's a chapter here. It's run by the co-founder of the Podacy app, Melody. Shout out to Melody. She is just such a hustler. She's my girl. She's awesome. She told me that there was an opening at Inside Podcasting. And Sky Pillsbury was writing before me. And another shout out to Sky, who's also amazing. And then I just, I didn't know how it was going to go. I had been working in podcast pitching, PR, marketing, like more that side of the industry. And then I just sent this in. I just sent my sample in. They responded to me. They said they loved me. And my quote unquote interview was basically just, hey, we want to hire you. And this is how it's going to go. So I remember even as I was being hired, I told the then director of ops, I can't believe that this is happening to me. I don't know if you think I'm uncool, but I genuinely cannot believe that this is happening. So yeah, and that was nearly two years ago. And since then, it's just been an amazing journey, thanks to the welcoming community that we are a part of. Yeah, it's true. It is a very welcoming community. And there's like different branches of the community too, right? Like, but it's all one big community, but there's more of like, there's a lot of like the independent people just hanging together. And then there's like a lot of just the industry people hanging together. And that's why I like to have like, like meet with and chat with people and introduce people 
to people like you, because I mean, it's like connecting the bridge. We're all resources to help each other, et cetera. So it's, it's important to do that, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And when I started receiving pitches, I was getting so many wonderful pitches for podcasts that people have not heard of, mostly independent ones, not coming from big production houses. And I started listening to them. I fell in love with them. And I already had been listening to podcasts for the longest time. Like I used to have my podcasts downloaded on, I don't know if you'll remember, we used to have the MP3 players with a little USB stick on there. I have one of those even now. So I was, I used to listen to Jordan Harbinger on that. And yeah, and it just started to come full circle in terms of wanting to be involved with stories that are making a difference and having the capability on the platform that is inside podcasting to promote these podcasts that are telling meaningful stories. And yeah, I would just want to keep pushing more independent producers. It's not just inside podcasting, right? There's, it's like a part of inside. Am I correct at all? Yes, absolutely. Inside has other newsletters, which uh, the ones that I enjoy are artificial intelligence and streaming. And they even, I think they even had like an inside movie one, which was fun too. Nobody works on inside podcasting other than I do. So it's just me and they edit the newsletter for me. So it's honestly, it's a matter of pride to grow it from or rather to take it from Sky and then be able to continue like those were big shoes to fill and to add my own flavor and my own twist to the stories that I tell to the newsletter itself. And it's still on the growth path. So I'm loving it. How many hours a week do you spend on it? Because now that I know that there is nobody else, it is you. So writing it takes like about six hours a week, but it's hard to quantify this because I'm always on Twitter. I'm always on Reddit. I'm constantly listening to podcasts. I'm constantly thinking, what am I going to put in the newsletter that people are going to want to read or they're going to resonate with? I am part of so many Twitter communities and like at least 10 different Slack channels that are all just podcasting related. So there's just constant information consumption when it comes to this industry. So even though it, I I would say that it takes six hours to write because I'm always primed to start reporting on podcasting. Like it's one of those things that I have so many opinions about. My friends are always like, don't talk about podcasting around her. You're going to activate her. So it's one of those things that I just, every time someone talks about a story or tells me that they're watching a show or something, I'll just be like, oh, you know, there's a podcast for that. Or this was taken from a podcast. Or if you like the show, you might like this podcast. So I'm a walking, talking recommendation and opinion machine. So before we kick things off, we only have to do it the right way. Let's just get the uh, the sponsor of this episode <laughs> going here. Tell us about yourself, Greg. Tell us what you offer, pal. Yeah. So if you're a true crime, paranormal, scary, or comedy podcaster, and you're looking to grow your show, you can submit an episode to Indie Drop-In. We will play the full episode of your show to an embedded base of listeners, listeners looking for your content. Then if they like you, they'll follow you. And guess what? It's 100% free. I actually pay Tanner and Jeff he does. to get your content. If you can believe that. I don't know how I got roped into being the creator of Indie Drop-In, but I will like to promote your show. How was that, Jeff? That's good. Tanner, what do you think? I think you did a better job than I do. <laughs> Definitely does a better job than I do. I can hardly even talk. Yeah. Well, no, I think you do a great job. I, uh, I've i heard your ads so many times that now I just replay them in my head. But for anyone interested in submitting a show, just go to IndieDropIn.com forward slash creators just follow the form and i'll take it from there are you doing anything else for work besides that yes i I assumed i mean because it's yeah absolutely yes so i recently started co-hosting the download which is a news podcast from the sounds profitable newsletter it's produced by brian barletta and evo terra and my co-host is the wonderful manuela who is the marketing lead at LWC Studios. So we deliver what we consider to be the most important podcasting news on a weekly basis. We not just deliver it, but we also contextualize it 
especially for the people who are working in the business of podcasting. So that's one thing that I recently started and I'm super excited for it. I also am working with Tink Media, which is run by Lauren Passell. And that, I was just telling someone this morning that that is really like, I love that job so much. It's an addiction. I love matching podcasts with each other for swaps. I love pitching podcasts. I love pitching guests, pitching for guests, all of that, like just connecting more with the people working in the space, the people who are creating wonderful content and having the chance to help them grow. I love that. So those are some of the podcasting things I'm doing. But other than that, I'm always writing content for mostly branded content for companies like Gumball, RSS, Signal Hill, and anywhere in between. Yeah. I love Brian Barletta. I probably love him more than he loves me. He's been on this show. Ariel introduced him to me. Time flies. It's crazy. It was quite a while ago now, but how did you get involved with him? Because I tell you what, I pitched him a podcast last week and he told me to delete the tweet. He was so offended by my idea. I thought (laughs) it was a really good idea, but dang, he just, he shot it down, man. So I'm curious how you got involved. I think, well, Brian started writing Sounds Profitable, which is an ad tech newsletter, pretty much at the same time that I took over Insight Podcasting from Sky. I, as a marketer, so yes, like I said, I studied to be a marketer and my day job at the time was in Google ads, Facebook ads, that space. So as a marketer and as a person involved in podcasting, I was instantly in love with his newsletter. And I know that... Mm -hmm. It comes across as niche, but I think that it is an important educational resource for everyone who's working in podcasting, whether you're creating, whether you're producing, whether you're an industry professional, you're a C-suite person, you need to know how ads and sales and podcasting, how the money works. So I started just promoting him on Twitter and tagging him on everything. And yeah, since then, the relationship has just grown. And when I think when Evo and him And they talk about this on the show as well. When they started the download, they had the idea that they wanted to give it off to people who, in their words, not mine, don't look like them. So that's when Manuela and I came into the picture and now we're co-hosting it and it's the best time. Yeah, I'm enjoying the podcast. It is a good time and it's not like a long lesson, right? It's a short lesson, but it's full of good information that goes into further detail, like you said, maybe then what James would do with pod news, but it is a good listen. No, I'm enjoying it as well. So I think you guys do a great job with that. And I give you kudos for breaking through with uh, Brian. i not able to do it, man. I'm going to keep pitching ideas to him though. Maybe I'll just make it a <laughs> weekly thing. So I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's like, it's awesome that you're in on and getting to build all these relationships with the people in the industry. It's awesome because I am like at a, like a different position, right? I talk to a lot of people who are brand new. They're not in it for anything that you just said. A lot of them are in it just to hang out with their friend and make a podcast. And they want to know like some good tricks or like how to do a good job doing that. Like none of the ad tech last worry of theirs from a mile away. Right. So yeah, I kinda, absolutely. I'm kind of like the underground fight club guy of independent content creators, independent podcasters. It's like a little bit different world. So like I said earlier, it's cool. We can bring it all together because it really, some people are just in a completely different position with what they're doing with podcasting. Have you been able to meet any, I mean, since you've been doing that and you've been on Twitter, I'm sure you've got to meet all sorts of cool, different types of indie podcasters. Do you you see what I'm saying? Like there's different types. Absolutely. And I would say that I'm immensely biased towards the people creating audio fiction as well as those doing like TTRPG podcasts. I think one of my favorite ones is Venture Maiden. Such a great show. So I've had, I want to call it the privilege because it really does feel like a privilege to be connected to people producing content that I listen to and I love that it won't be an understatement to say makes me cry. So I've been able to connect with them. I also find that hanging out on Reddit, on the podcasting subreddits, helps me understand so much about how people who are not exactly, you know, like you said, industry professionals in this space, what are their motivations? 
Why are they in it? What do they think about how the space is growing and evolving? And sometimes it feels like a small industry because we there's a certain set of people that know each other. But when we go outside of that circle, there's just so many amazing content creators that I'm excited to discover what they're doing, what they're thinking, and what their motivations are when it comes to podcasting. Yeah, you're right. There really is like a whole other world because when there's like a lot of podcast movements going on as as you and I are recording this, I've had so many people reach out to me. They're like, what the hell is podcast movement and why is this a big deal? It's because they are not, that's the furthest thing from their mind, right? So when you get to share that kind of stuff with people, it is cool. But then again, it's you're also taking it back a level to where they are at and just trying to do whatever you can to help them because it's it's a completely different world. You're right. And I'm hoping that the work that I'm doing with Inside Podcasting and also what James Credlin does with Pod News so well is reporting on things that are more than just for industry professionals and really giving context to people no matter where they're at in the industry. And I tell this to everyone who approaches me, people who are just, like you said, just having conversations with their buddies. They have a hobby and they want to share it with everyone. When they come to me and they're like, how do I grow? Or, you know, what do I need to know? That's what I tell them. I'm like, subscribe to Pod News, subscribe to my newsletter and get on Reddit. Like, that's where you need to be. And that's what you need to know to begin with. So... I love knowing what people's motivations are. I know that one of the things that I've wanted to do for the longest time is to have my own podcast. And I think that the download is a start to that. But my podcast is probably going to be something based around something I'm crazy about. Like initially, I thought that I would make a classic rock show. And then I was like, oh my God, there's going to be too much work around music licensing. And I'm not sure how this is going to go. Also, I'm reporting constantly on podcasts, so if it's not something perfect, I'm going to be ashamed to put it out there. And so that kind of bit me (laughs) in the ass. And I even found a co-host for that. And I wouldn't say that I've tabled that idea, but I have tabled that idea for now. I can see. So what you're saying is like you feel with what you're doing, like almost more pressure on yourself if you're going to create more audio content, like you're going to be really tough on yourself. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. And I think that that is a me thing and not an industry thing. Because I remember, I think it was last week that I just tweeted out asking how podcasters get themselves in the zone before recording. And it was clearly very much a question for me. It was not a, hey, share your advice because, you know, I'm an inside podcasting writer, whatever. Like, like, I want to know what you're doing. Teach me. And so many people responded to that. It kind of blew up. And even before jumping on this session, I reread that response thread. And there were a couple of vocal exercises on that that I did. And I felt more prepared for that. So I know that it is such a welcoming and amazing industry where people are honestly giving away great value for pretty much nothing. So it's wonderful to be a part of it. Jeff Townsend here, and I'm excited to talk to my good friend, Mark Binder. I'm just kidding. His name is Mark Binder. He doesn't like it when I say that. Mark is the (laughs) creator. I'm going to say owner just because it sounds entrepreneur-y of Podtrix, the podcast hosting platform. Thanks for joining us, man. I'm excited to hear about this new Podtrix feed import feature that you're going to share with me and us, everybody, the world. Share it with the world, Mark. World behold this. Uh, No. So yeah, the Podtrix feed importer, it's really simple. The Podtrix feed importer is really exciting because it's how you migrate your existing podcast feed to Podtrix hosting. All you got to do is the the URL that you would submit to Spotify or Apple or Overcast or whatever, you paste that into the little pop-up that shows up in your show and you say import. The system then goes and will start importing all of your episodes, whether it be 10 episodes or 10,000 episodes, it will pull in every single episode, all the audio, your descriptions, your categories, everything is moved into Podtrix seamlessly and is ready for publishing. This feature is already live right now and is available to anybody who wants to use it. So what we're really here, this is like the big coming out party for all you current podcasters to come on over and check out Podtrix, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Everybody's welcome. You do offer something to the listeners of this podcast. 
If you use the code IndiePod during checkout, you'll get 25% off your first three months of Pod Tricks. That's a good deal. I'm here to support you guys to be creative. You can contact me by sending an email to hello at podtricks.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. I encourage everybody to go on to podtricks.com right now and check it out and use the promo code IndiePod to get a little bit of a discount. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, some people spend a lot of time on, I mean, myself included, who spend a lot of time on this trying to help people because I know when I first started creating audio content forever ago now, there were people that did that for me, right? So like, it's always been important to me to give back like those people did for me. And I just think we're in such a more developed era now to be able to do it. And there's just so many more resources and people available to do so. So it really is a good time to at least learn more about it for sure. Let me ask you this though. So Reddit, I have not been on Reddit Even when I was on Reddit in the past, it wasn't for like podcasting, right? It was for a podcast, but it was for like the niche of that podcast, let's say. So you're on, I don't know what threads you're on or whatever you're doing on there. So what are some of the things you see on Reddit that people are asking for help with the most? Very basic stuff for me here on Twitter, right? I get a lot of like, it's interesting because I talk with, you know, friends with Tanner Campbell and he gets more of like the people that have been doing it a little bit more. And they've got all these technical questions or something. I get a lot of just like questions that like very, very beginner questions. That's probably what I get the most of, which is super cool because it's like a fresh mind to talk to. And it's not somebody that's like necessarily stuck in their way. See what I'm saying? Like the more longer somebody's been doing it, not everybody's willing to make a change or like it's like they're asking a question, but they don't really want to listen, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there's a way to approach it, especially for someone like you who is running a community, which is very much geared towards indie podcasters. I can see how someone would recognize you as a resource in the space, someone that they can ask questions to and get responses from. And I think when I go into Reddit, I want to know what people are talking about that newsletters are not reporting. Like, especially when there's a merger that happens, what are the people who listen? What are they saying about this? Like, and the podcasting pundits, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way at all, they have opinions as experts. And I almost find myself stuck in the bubble sometimes because I listen to their opinions all the time and I'm constantly reading what they're saying. So I'm assuming that my reader has that level of context, but they don't always. My readers could be people who are just listening on Spotify and they want to know what is the big deal with Spotify acquiring everyone? Why is suddenly everybody talking about that? So that's when I go to Reddit to, I want to even use the word investigate what people are thinking, what are they talking about? And I think that's one side of it when it's more related to the content, but when it comes to more of the creation side, the one thing that I've seen most people ask with help for is, hey, do I need to monetize my podcast? Like it's been, you know, I started this as a hobby. It's been six months. I'm getting decent downloads. Do you think I can make money off of this without putting in, without going crazy because I have a day job? And that's one of the things that people are asking about. And that's why I saw that and I worked with Gumball to write an article about podcast monetization and when you need to even start caring about monetizing your podcast and what kind of method you should take depending on your show. So there's all these sorts of questions and you see that there's a lot of audio advice, which I'm guessing that's what people are asking you as well when you said, quote unquote, basic questions. They're asking for the kind of equipment to buy. How do I set it up? And it's amazing the level of detail that people will share their methods to. You know, they're not holding any information back. And I think that that just comes back to the point of me just saying how amazing this community is. Or maybe it's one that I have well and truly been a part of on many different fronts. But it does feel to me like it is so welcoming and the barrier to entry is low on almost all fronts. Yeah. And you were kind of starting off on like, you're talking about when you're writing, right? It's like a challenge between who are you writing for? And a lot of times in 
content creation and everything else. Like I started out in radio actually, and I always called them the old guard of radio. They were like, they could be stuck in their way sometimes. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but they could be stuck in their way sometimes and they'll be giving completely different information than people that are maybe like doing it the new way, right? Because things have changed on the past. So like there's always like a happy middle place to find. And that really is a challenge because you don't want to like limit yourself to just like just the industry people you want to support and kind of be like there for the creators as well. So it's, I think we all struggle with that. So like what I found out with this podcast is I started it and I would just share a bunch of indie podcasters, right? And that was like a really cool way to get a lot of them to listen to my show. But then they started asking like, hey, like, you know, they started asking me a certain amount of questions, like certain questions. So instead of like me always just giving the answers, I would go and I would bring people on like Ariel Nissenblatt was like a a really big one because they hadn't ever really talked to anybody in the industry, most of them. So I know when she came onto the show and she talked about just some basic promotional things on social media, like I've had hundreds of them, like literally hundreds of people thank me for introducing me to her. So like, to me, it's important to also bring in other people that can educate. And you're trying to do that with a newsletter as well. It just seems like I've never done a bunch of writing, worked in marketing. So there's always like a certain level of it, but writing is still content creation, but it's just different on, there's just so many different aspects of it. And there's just so many different, it is just so different on how you're trying to reach people. I guess is what I'm saying, because it's not audio even though you're writing about something, an industry that is audio. Is that, is that a challenge? Like, I mean, what's the most challenging part about it? Do you think? I think to be able to take a news piece that I think is important to more than one sector of the industry, but really extract what part of it is relevant to which part of the industry, like that's been challenging. So when the Spotify, Joe Rogan, Neil Young, like that happened, I remember writing it from three different perspectives, or rather writing to three different audiences. One, people in the industry who are decision makers, like people who are working as industry professionals. Two, people who are creating. And they are genuinely worried or wary of what's going to happen as the industry grows and you've got more celebrity podcasters coming in. And third, just listeners who are interested who listen to podcasts and hang out on Spotify and things like that. So it was tough because I had my own opinions. And obviously, every journalist has some of their own opinions and keeping that bias aside and being able to report in a way that was unbiased, but at the same time, not boring, honestly, to anyone. Like if it's an industry professional reading, I clearly mark as this is for the industry professional. What does this mean for you? For the creator, what does this mean for you? For a brand who is looking to invest into podcasting. What does this mean for you? So I'm not always able to do that because not every piece of news is relevant to everyone. But if it's something this big that is being caught by the attention of mainstream media, then people start subscribing to the newsletter and I know that they want to know what's happening. So to be able to speak directly to that audience, I think that is super challenging for me at least, but in a fun way. Yeah, I think that would would be it. Yeah. Well, I guess what I'm saying is like, I have a lot of respect for you. Like you have to wear so many different hats and approach it from so many different angles, because like with this podcast we're talking on right now, I think everybody knows who's listening and who it's for, right? If other people find enjoyment in it, it always blows my mind that people that don't podcast listen to this podcast. But if other people are enjoying it, that's great. But I don't think there's any like secret. It's in the title, right? Of who I'm making it for. So I just think it's like I said, a lot of respect. Kudos to you. That's that's got to be challenging for sure. And it's what fun. are some other things in pod? We'll stay on this. If it wasn't fun, you wouldn't do it, though, right? Like if you're having a miserable time, you wouldn't do it. The challenge is probably part of what makes it so great. Yeah, and it comes back to why I wanted to get into writing in the first place is to be able to distill pieces of information for different audiences. And you mentioned wearing different hats. I do wear all of those different hats, though. Like I've worked with companies that have done podcast ads. I worked with creators who are independent creators who are looking to promote their shows and have 
questions and confusions. I've worked with industry professionals who already know so much more about podcasting than I did. So, and of course, I'm a marketer as well. So all of those are hats that I wear and they're all below being a podcast listener first and foremost myself. So I always see it from a point of view of what is it that I would care about? And that's what I start off with. And then I'm super grateful to all the people who send in their feedback. And this is one thing I love about writing inside podcasting is when I ask for responses or when I ask for feedback, people do reply. And these are independent creators. And I've received responses from people who are subscribed and they're living in Spain and they're following the newsletter and they know what's happening. And I'm just like, wow, you are so far away and you're reading this and you care about it. I am so glad to hear back from you. And they will give me their requests on the kind of content that they want more of and less of. So it's really with their help, with the audience's help that I've been able to nurture this. You know, I'm really proud to be an indie podcaster, but I do know one of the things that I have the most difficult time keeping up with is editing this very podcast. It kicks my butt every week, but I will tell you, I did find a solution to this and and a team that I can trust to edit my podcast, the team at How's It Podcasting. I met these guys online and I'm not going to lie, I was a little skeptical at first, right? Like this is my baby. And for me to trust somebody else with it was a really big deal. I did give them a shot and I've just just been so satisfied with the results. They understand that you don't have the most amount of money to spend. They have very affordable options to edit your podcast. I do think it'll help you keep your podcast going longer and help you maintain that level of creativity that you're needing because that needs to be your main focus is actually creating the content. I want you to reach out to them and give them a shot. How's it podcasting? So it's H-O-W-Z-I-T podcasting. On Twitter, you can find them at How's It WP. Same with Instagram, How's It WP. And on Facebook, look up How's It Podcasting. Their email is How's It WP at gmail.com. This will all be in the show notes. No worry. But if you really want to spend that time focusing on the content you're creating and, and not just spending hours and hours beyond hours editing, I highly encourage you to check out How's It Podcast Editing. It's important to have people like you, I think, working in the industry, too, because I know a lot of people that talk to me, they're very intimidated by people that work in the industry. And I think it's important to have people like you because you kind of like ease that and make them feel more comfortable and they feel like you're and you're not the only one, but that these people are important, right? They're approachable and it's just makes for an easier time for everybody and for them in particular. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Ariel. She's definitely one of them. I think. Oh, and yeah. she has been someone like that for me as well. So I'm thinking about Ariel. I'm thinking about some of the wonderful folks at Pacific Content that have been welcoming in both in the content that they write and how easy it is to make conversation with them, be it on Twitter or if you just reach out to them by email and you have a clear question to ask. They will respond to you, maybe not immediately, but when they do, you can rest assured that it will be a valuable and useful response. So I'm just trying to learn from them and really pay back what is it that they invested and what they gave me. Yep, exactly. That's what I was saying earlier. That's what it's all about to me, like with what I'm doing right now. It's like it takes a lot of time and effort, right? But it's that's what's important. Let me ask you something. What are some things coming up in podcasting or you think will be coming up in podcasting that you're excited about? I'm really excited about interactive audio as it's coming up. I just in today's newsletter reported that Podcast One is has partnered with Adori Labs. And I spoke about, I spoke with Adori Labs and Vodacast last year, and they're both interactive audio companies. And I'm excited as a marketer and as someone working in the podcasting industry for what this means for more and more shows that are going on YouTube. I know Adori just launched a YouTube specific platform, which basically means that when you will put your show on YouTube, it's more than just a static thumbnail. Like you can actually have things on there that allow the viewer, the listener rather to interact with your show. So as a techie, marketer, podcaster, whatever you want to call it. That's a big one that I'm excited for. I'm also super interested and intrigued to see what the industry does with 
all of this data that is telling us that more and more listening is becoming multicultural. So we've got more African-American and Hispanics as well as Asians listening to podcasts. But what does that mean? What does that mean for more than just marketers or brands? How will the industry make the BIPOC community feel represented and within the audio space? And I think the same thing goes for queer folks as well. How will they be better represented in audio? So I'm super excited to see how that goes. I think podcast as an industry really has a chance to do something that no other medium has done before because we have a lot of opportunities to learn. And I can see that from my experiences, it has been very welcoming to me as a woman of color, as a queer woman of color. And I'm excited to see what kind of content we continue to create. So for you, how important is it for you to like use the platform that you have to support those causes, to support that cause? A woman of color, a queer woman, like you said, both of those are very important People need to be representing those. So how important is it to you that you have all these platforms now to do that? I wouldn't even say that it's important. I would say at this point, it's necessary for a voice like mine Mm -hmm. to be included in the mix. And the industry has seen that. And they have cultivated not just me, but so many other voices like the BIPOC podcast creators. You've got Twyla Dang, you've got Manuela, I've already mentioned her. And those are just some off the top of my head. I'm sure there are so, so many more that are not coming to my mind right now. But industry has seen that these people, their voices, our voices need to be cultivated and really put in front of the loudspeaker. And I think that it's essential to strike a balance between reporting what I believe is important and reporting from the heart. And podcasting as a medium kind of allows me to do that because when I put pods on the blog, when I include those shows on there, they are shows that I would align my values with. And I have never, I've only heard good things about that section. People tell me that they listen to a lot of those shows and they're surprised that, oh, we didn't hear about this, but we read about it on Inside Podcasting and we're loving it. I remember... The closest show to my heart that I got to spotlight as well as interview the producers is called Scrolls and Leaves. And it's essentially a podcast about reclaiming South Asian stories from a colonial perspective. Like they were previously told told from a colonial perspective, but now they're being retold from the South Asian perspective. So I had a chance to interview the creators of that show. And I remember thinking, not only is this a podcast that's really well produced, wonderfully written, and has a message that I can get behind, but I am so lucky that I have a platform that I can use to spotlight amazing things like this. And it's amazing that you're doing that because some people, then they have the platform, they don't do that for various different reasons. Maybe they feel like they can't. So the fact that you are actually doing it with taking advantage of what you have and doing that is the best. And I'm I'm sure everybody's very thankful for that. So yes, thank you. Yeah. A lot of more work to be done, but we keep on keeping on. Yeah. So you know that a lot of podcasters are listening. We'll segue here towards the end, but I'm going to put you on the spot. If you had to, you have to, I'm just going to say, you have to do it. You have to do this. You have to tell me what you think. If you had to pick this one generalized advice you could give? What is the most important thing you could think of off the top of your head? I think my answer would be to listen to and platform shows that are not yours. So if you're on a social media platform or if you're part of a podcasting forum or a Facebook group or Reddit, whatever, when you, especially as an independent podcaster, listen to and share work that's not yours, There's almost something very selfless in that that helps you be a part of the industry. And I don't want to come across as preachy here. It is just something that I've seen work. Because when you do that, not only are you putting out good karma that's going to come back to you, but you're also coming across as not salesy. When a podcast that I love shares another show, I am more likely to listen to it. So if you do that good deed of just retweeting another podcast's tweet, it's going to help you get a very small, easy, but essential start 
in promoting your own show. And of course, there's so much to be learned, so much to be emanated by listening to other independent podcasters. So I think that generically speaking, I would say be a part of the community and collaborate. But what does that look like at the very granular, basic level that looks like just starting off by retweeting and resharing other podcasts that you can get behind? I like that. I was actually about to use the word community. We'll end it with this. How important do you think this community is? And you just used a really good example, just starting out small. What are some of the payoffs that you think could come from being really engaged in this podcasting community? I just want to clarify the question. So when you say this community, you mean like the independent creators community specifically or podcasting community as a whole? Good question. As a whole. I think that there's a lot of learning opportunity here. We've already spoken about free advice being given out that's valuable. So that I would say is the number one advantage that you can get. It's also different from other communities and spaces that I've been in where you can actually approach the people who might seem like they're at the top of the food chain. You know how you mentioned people from the industry Mm -hmm. often intimidate creators, even though they're not intimidating themselves. But no, this you're, is you're right. I'm not trying to interrupt you. You're right. They are not there. So many of them have reached out to me or have reached out to them and they really aren't. You're right. So this is a place where you can ask questions and please, please do ask questions. I know there are companies that do wonderful things for giving you feedback on your podcast. So one of the things that's coming to mind right now is the edit program. I think it's run by timber.fm and It's basically for $20 a month, you have a panel of expert podcasters just listening to your show and giving you feedback. What could be an easier way to improve the quality of your work if you're so willing to do it? So this is, I think, one of the best spaces and best, most giving community to be a part of. It's amazing that you bring that up because you're right. There's other communities where it's just hard to have access to people that can help you, right? Like, and that's not the case with podcasting. And obviously I'm talking to you right now and I've really enjoyed it. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us where we can find all the great work that you're doing because you're up to quite a few things. So you can subscribe to Inside Podcasting on inside.com slash podcasting. You can find the download on the Sounds Profitable website or hate saying this, any podcasting platform that you use to listen to. And you can find me on Twitter. If you DM me, I'll respond within 48 to 72 hours. But if you tweet out to me, I might respond quicker than that. So I understand that there's a backlog of DMs on my end as well sometimes. So I fully understand that. Hey, again, I really appreciate the work that you're doing. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. It was awesome being here. Thanks for listening. And thanks for telling a friend. But more importantly, thank you for supporting independent content creators. If you're enjoying the podcast or like the work we're doing in the indie podcaster community, I ask you to tell just one fellow content creator that hasn't heard of this podcast or the work we're doing and share it with them. But more importantly, I hope you continue with me on this journey as the indie podcaster. Keep being you. Keep being great. And the question is, do I stay here? Will you be back? Are you going to come back? Will you be back? Are you coming back?